the day. From NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. It's week one of the NFL on EA Sports. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. Now this will be returned from deep in the end zone. And not a good return here at all as they'll be forced to start at the 12-yard line. So here are the Jaguars now with a long field ahead. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section. What did the columnists write? Possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Well, who gave away the game plan? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious, though. That will help them win. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And a dump off here to Robinson. That catch good for only a couple. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. They'll look to throw. Being chased out left. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This will be a 41-yard punt, three on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Texans taking over offensively, and it is, of course, Deshaun Watson who leads them out at quarterback. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. Watson's throw taken in by Valdez Scantling. Touchdown, Houston! Marquez Valdez Scantling, 68 yards. And the Texans are on the board here first in the season opener. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and it's now a 7 0 game. Those are the kind of drives they like on offense from the coordinator to the quarterback, the line, everybody. One play drive and into the end zone for six. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone and only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And Charles, nothing like squaring off with a division opponent, a division rival in week one. Do you like that they are matching up this early, or would you prefer a game like this be a few weeks down the road? I actually like the early matchup for a few reasons, Brandon. First of all, it allows you to see that in the entire offseason and know, hey, right out of the gate, we're playing a division game. Second part is it spreads them out a little bit. If you just have and he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Tanner Muse able to run it down for a loss of a yard. When it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. On third down, he'll drop to throw. 
This one incomplete. Almost picked up by the rookie, but he couldn't quite look it in. And now it's fourth down. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team. And he can't field it cleanly. It's loose. And the Jags grab it. And maybe getting a little too cute there on the punt return. Sometimes they forget Paramount holding on to that football. I really do believe most of the return guys think to themselves, when I get the ball, I'm going to make the play that's going to change yeah, the I'm game. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. And you love that they have that attitude, but your point is so well taken. What do you have to do? First and foremost, hold on to it. Take care of the football. That's all he needed to do. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. They'll look to throw now on first down. And connecting here with DJ Shark. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. Second and ten. They're going to look to throw. This is caught by Robinson. Five yards. Now it's third and five. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And Gay knocks this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points. Not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was real easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're putting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Watson, off play action. And Wright completes it to Jarwin. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Man coverage on the left side, so I really like the design of this play because they opened up the field and brought their tight end the other way on a crossing route. That's a lot of ground to cover if you're a defender. I've been there before, unable to stay with his man there. 
And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Two yards the loss, second and 12. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Here's Watson. And that will be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he hit a 62-yarder that hit the crossbar and went over this one a little bit inside of that, but not enough leg. And the difference is what? Well, your live conditions, live right? Live conditions, game conditions are a whole lot different than practice where you just pop it up there, no rush, no pressure. I think maybe that takes a couple yards away from you when you have to do it when it's real. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. They'll run it now with Robinson. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Back to throw now on first down. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Dancing to... And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Taylor Muse picks up his second sack of the afternoon. But many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked out and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. First down, they'll start out with Singletary. They find some open field here. 48 yards for him on the ground in his first quarter, and he has been tremendous to start the new year. They were probably just looking for a couple yards of breathing room, snapping the ball at their own two. Well, they got a lot of breathing room. And even knowing that offenses are as aggressive as they are now in the NFL, you still expect them to run the football in that situation. Why weren't they ready? Instead, it turns into a monster game and gets them away from the shadow of their own end zone. On second and nine, Watson. And his throw is incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. Throwing on third down, Watson. And that is incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. On is the putter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. And this will be taken at the 13. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. 
Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. On the run, it's Robinson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. And he'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down. When you spend your first round pick on a pass rusher, you are absolutely counting on him to be an impact player. And there you go. Right away, he gets to the quarterback. And guess what? Likely the first of many that we're going to see from that young man. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That'll be caught at Steven Sims. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want... Vic Fangio's thought about it, and he'll indeed throw the red flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. So that is, it winds up, a good call by Vic Fangio. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. They'll try and throw for it here. And that is caught. He's got his running back downfield. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big play that time through the air. 33 yards. On the defensive side of the ball, that's the definition of frustrated. You get them to fourth down, and then you allow a chunk play like that in the passing game. Almost felt as if that play was drawn up in the dirt on the sideline. They pulled that from a game plan that wasn't this game, and they still made it work. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Again, he'll drop to throw. On the slant, this is Chark. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Boy, this is a well-orchestrated drive they've put together. You think back to how far they were backed up to start things out? But they've gone on a march since then. And now after that completion there, they've got a first and goal. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seventh. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. They'll look to throw again. Rolling. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Tanner Muse getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts. This time on third down. Oh, that's offline. He hooked it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon. So apparently 
neither guy is immune. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he would end up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the gun, here's Watson. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again is Watson. And he comes back with one complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 20-yard line. On the give, this is Singletary. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Second and nine. the handoff it's Singletary and this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage it's a loss of a yard so it's back to third and ten Watson wide open receiver complete and the Texans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points and in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Singletary. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Singletary again. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Here's Watson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. And based on my math... They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. So a long drive gets them down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of the team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. 50 yards rushing for him in this first half as he is looking in mid-season form here in the opener.
They'll look to throw here on first down. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Quick hitter here. It's complete. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. to throw and he goes down but not before getting this inside the 25 oh that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that he lined up on his left ran the deep in route over the middle and the ball was right where it needed to be really good trust between quarterback and receiver really good completion so they'll get nothing out of that play and that'll make it second and ten To throw here. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll run here with Robinson. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Thinking on defense there. They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. A nine yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying this one up. I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. They'll try and run it here. And he will not get there as the try for two is unsuccessful. And they will remain down by a point. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offense has spent a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Deshaun Watson of the Texans offense trot back out there. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Second and nine. Watson. This to Jarwin. The 40. 20. 10. Touchdown, Houston. Blake Jarwin. 74 yards. And the Texans are able to show off their quick strike ability. Now the point after try for Santos. And with that, the lead is up to eight. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. James Robinson and the rest of the Jags offense set to go to work once more. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game. 
because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This will be third and five. They run. Robinson. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run. And boy, they were successful. He'll drop to throw. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. The Jaguars on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. Here it's third and three. They'll look to throw here. Buying time to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up, running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. They'll drop to throw. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Jalen Ferguson in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Boy, a real head scratcher there. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll run here with Singletary. Good footwork at the 30. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 61 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. On first down, Watson. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there. And now it's third down at inches. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. 
always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Second and goal. Watson. And it is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Deshaun Watson with his third touchdown pass of this first half. And the Texans are looking good here in the season opener as they're able to extend their lead. So a good start to the campaign so far for them here in week one. Yeah, all the things that you dreamed about in April and May and that you worked on in July and August, getting ready for this game, it's all coming together so far. down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if the ball comes together. touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right Santos with the extra point and the lead is up to 15 now so that winds up a seven play drive all told and it results in the Texans finding the end zone takes it at the seven and they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave him great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. To make and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Tanner Muse. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. They come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. And that is incomplete. Nearly intercepted. The free safety couldn't quite get his hands around it, and it brings up third down. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. on that last play and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next the Texans here on third down putting an extra defender in the secondary looking to throw he's going to fire one deep middle of the field and unable to connect incomplete Give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. The offense going to stay out there. They've converted once, failed once. What can they do here on fourth down? He'll layer this one out deep for Sims. And incomplete on the deep ball. A surprising move to go for it, and predictably, at least somewhat predictably, it doesn't pay off. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. On first and ten, Watson. Open man is Cooks. He's got it. Touchdown, Texans. Deshaun Watson. Four touchdown passes now in the ballgame. And the 
Texans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. So that pretty conclusively, I might add, shows you the perils of going for it and not making it on fourth down. One play, touchdown. Yeah, and I've got to put this on the man in charge, the head coach. He made the decision to go for it to me when punting was the only decision to make, and it backfired on him in a big way. Santos now to add the PAT. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Touchdown here, Santos, to kick this one away. From the six. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Look at DJ Chark as he and the rest of the offense head back out. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. We'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Back to throw now on second and ten. Oh, a contested ball here and it's going to be caught. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This from 54 yards away. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. That's all right, we will save the week one highlights and apparently get right back to the action here in the third. fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back under and he can't field it cleanly it's loose and they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35 for the texans getting ready to go here to begin the third quarter now the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead before the other guys even see the football, that could be the decisive blow in this game. I think that's how they're eyeing it. That's how they're approaching it. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And that will be good for eight yards to the 45. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with a bandit. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Back to throw, Watson. the football. A 
offensively lucky there, able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it, change of field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. 39 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Forced out to his left. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Hands it off out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. 69 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. He'll look to throw. They'll roll him out right. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. They'll run for it with Robinson. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Brandon, fourth and one on their own side of the 50, and they decide to go for it as a former defender. I take that personally. I can't believe they let them pick that up. They should have swarmed the line of scrimmage and stuffed that one. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll set up a throw. Steps away to his left. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A big play that time on the catch and run. The offense has to love that because that was just a dump down and then he turned something out of seemingly nothing. And the best quarterbacks understand that dumping it down is often a good play, a better play than even what was drawn up. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. They'll get to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork, we saw a good job defensively to recover. Back to throw again. Being chased out left. And he's going to have to eat this when his down he goes. Tanner Muse able to record his fifth sack of the season. On third down. Sweet. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 
Sort of interesting going with a draw play there. Do you like that call? I don't, but it would be a lot more powerful coming from me if I had said it before the play actually happened, if I had first guessed it. But look, a draw in that situation, heavy risk-reward. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. James Robinson, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars get a score closer. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. And he will find the end zone again. So he gets the touchdown and the two-point conversion. And that'll cut this deficit down a little bit further. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting in a great spot. Up two scores here in the third quarter. Now a deep ball here hauled in just past the 50. Touchdown! Houston. It's another touchdown pass for Deshaun Watson, his fifth of the afternoon. And the Texans push further out in front. Santos able to tank on the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. To the touchdown here Santos to kick this one away takes it at the seven and a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30 yard line Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. dropped it and that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone well so much for getting separation no chance there locked down tight forcing the incompletion on that attempt so after the incompletion on first now second and ten they'll look to throw escaping the pressure right it's a short one here complete to the tight end they do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? And they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a blown coverage. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. I'm oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Now a field goal try coming up here for the Jags. From the left hash, this from 46. Gay's kick is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. 
So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Houston's offense taking over again. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, we'll see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. On second and nine, Watson. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. To throw is Watson. And that is incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. So possession goes over here on the punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. A big connection on that one. 34 yards. Now look, you're not going to be able to get this all back at once, but that certainly helps. So you're saying three yards in a cloud of dust, not the strategy? I go aerial attack. Yeah, I think that's what has to happen. And if you're going to run it, you need to break off big chunks. We just saw a big play right there. They need plenty of those. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. On play action, they'll throw. Steps away. And that is taken in by Hurst. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Now that's one they hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll look to throw. Flush to his right. So no sack, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll still bring up a fourth down. But there was pressure all around him, so the only play was to try and get out of there. I think it was an excellent effort by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage. I guess they figure they gotta start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. They'll set up to throw. A high throw there as this is knocked away, down to the ground and incomplete. The Jags come up empty on fourth down, and this Texans defense stands tall. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Singletary to get the drive started, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Jadavian Clowney wants a member of these Texans there on the stop. A shotgun snap for Watson. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. And got his man complete. And he'll get this way down into Jacksonville territory. A huge play there for Houston. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Watson now to throw. 
And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Sit. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Deshaun Watson taking it in from seven yards away. And the Texans will extend their lead. So this looking more and more like it is going to be a successful kickoff to their campaign as they add on here. And partner, you know NFL coaches, they're on the sideline thinking about all the little things that need correcting. But for the most part, they've got to be ecstatic with the way the season has started out. Santos with the extra point, and they open the lead up now to 25. Now after the touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. They're going to look to throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Dancing to his left. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, to me, this leads to the question, do you admire the way he puts his body out there all the time, or do you think he should protect himself a little bit more? <laughs> well, he's been on the ground several times with all those sacks that he's taken. So, I don't know, I kind of admire him not sliding down there, don't you? I'm with you on that one. The meter definitely leans towards admiration. There's a nice pickup right there, and after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. And that's complete. It sends. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he'll let this one go deep for Chark. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Seventh play of this drive coming up and a long way to go on third down. Buying time to his left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. They'll try and run for it. And he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And this Texans defense stands tall. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 26. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. But listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head out of harm's way. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Out of the gun, Watson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I don't know, he had to be 
be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus. Yeah, the that's thing. true. Gotta stay with it. That's true. And the punt team on now as this one set away. Fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory. But the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold it. But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Well, we'll see what his offense can do. Back to throw now on first down. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And worth pointing out, after that last completion, that puts this young quarterback over 10,000 yards passing for his career. And fair to say, he's not done yet. No doubt about it. He's really just getting started because he's not quite into the prime of his career. So it's likely he's going to hit a few more of these milestones as this career progresses. So let's face it, we'll acknowledge this number and we'll celebrate the milestones down the road. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. On third down, he'll drop to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. And well, that ball is caught by DJ Chart for the Jags touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Jaguars make some inroads here on that deficit. Well, this opening game has certainly not gone their way to this point, but, you know, that touchdown may be a, a glimmer of hope for the long season ahead. And no one in this league likes to talk about moral victories. No one likes to really just say, okay, well, maybe something went right. But you're exactly right about that. A little glimmer there. Maybe they can carry it over moving forward. And they're able to ground it in there on the two-point try. And you and I were talking before the game that two-point conversions from the 15-16 season, what has changed, what hasn't changed, partner? Yeah, I'll tell you what's changed is just your, no, your normal strategy because now you're either kicking the football with the ball on the 15-yard line or if you decide to go for two, they put it on the two-yard line. So what are you thinking as a coach? Do I risk it? Do I go for it here? Do I try and gain a strategic advantage and maybe go for two early? That's what people are wondering about. They'll run on first down with Singletary. Jadavian Clowney wants a member of these Texans there on the stop. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And he's going to get this inside the 30. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. On second down now, Singletary. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Yeah. 
And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points. But this widens it out, as you said. And now it's all about ball control, isn't it? And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. And they knew coming in that this would be a tough place to go in and win a season opener. But this has just been a performance, to be frank, not to be proud of here as they trail big in this fourth quarter. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Sims. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. With that grab, he now sits at 200 for his career, and maybe more importantly, a first down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Open man here, Sims complete. Now he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. After the incomplete pass here now, is second and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. That's caught by Sims. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense they are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll look to throw again. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. They'll wind up losing three here on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. The throw taken in by Sims. And he'll be brought down shy of the first down marker at the 11. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Forced out to his left. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And this Texans defense stands tall. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. On first down, Singletary. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They go right back to Singletary. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Now it's Watson. That'll be complete to Alan Lazard. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Well, normally you might say start running the football, you've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continue to do so. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. 
Here's a give to Lindsey. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Now it's Lindsey. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Singletary trying the left side. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Devin Singletary. 51 yards. And the Texans are closing in on a winning start to the year as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Now the point after try for Santos. And that stretches the lead to 27. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Jags football again. DJ Shark ready to rock and roll. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He gets it to Sims, complete. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Paris Campbell. There to make the grab. And the Jaguars get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. They'll let Robinson try and run. And he'll get in. And they're going to draw themselves two points closer. Only had a couple of yards to gain there on the two-point conversion, and they were able to do it. And how many teams shy away from running the football on the two-point conversion? They treat two yards as if it were 20. If you're a good team running the ball, go to your strength. Go ahead and push it into the end zone. Yeah, they did. It worked. And the effort snuffed out. The Texans' hands team recovers. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number as empirical. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. That's caught left side by the tight end, Jordan. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they get five there on third and two. Now that's a big pickup right there. And so often we focus on how the quarterback's faking on play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels. You could see them trying to recover. They've been worked out offensively. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. 
Coming up on the final two and a half minutes. And boy, has it been fun to watch this offense operate. Quite the display, and now they look to polish it off. Right back to Singletary on second down. Down right around the 25. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. He's got his man, Valdez Scantling. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. He will push his weight down to about the 14. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Singletary again. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And with that, our journey begins, Charles. Week one in the books, going to be a great season. Oh, man, so much to look forward to. Isn't it nice to get a really good game right out of the gate? Preseason behind us, all these games count now, don't they? Yeah, this is the exciting time with just one week gone and plenty of weeks to come. So for the Texans, that'll be a happy locker room as they start this season 1-0. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the... I couldn't be any more.
today from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. It's week two of the NFL on EA Sports. 2-1 loss team set to lace it up. This ought to be fun, and we're underway on EA Sports. Fielded right around the eight. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. And he did everything possible to rally his team to a win last week, didn't he? What did he throw for? What? Over 450 yards. I mean, that's a pretty phenomenal performance. So, obviously, he and the offense were clicking pretty well. The other two-thirds, though, that comes into question. Defense and special teams, they'll need all of them to play better in this one, too. And his first pass is incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Sims. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 31-yard line. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Now from Colts' territory, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Now back to throw. Out to his left. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Back to throw here. On the move to his left. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And they're going to mark him down short. Maybe by about a yard, if that. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up fourth down. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Well, that's what's called being aggressive right there. But I don't know that it's reckless. I think it's much more of a message. A defense, I believe in you in case we don't get it. An offense, trying to let them know he believes in them as well. I like it. Your first drive of the game in plus territory. Be aggressive. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Here's second and ten. He'll drop to throw. Rolling to his left. He finds his man complete. That's Sims. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. the first 
first down before he's tackled at the five. The stop there on third. They could have held him to three on this opening drive. Now they have to bow their necks on first to goal. And if I'm looking at this from the offense's point of view, that's a big-time pickup right there. And I'd go right at him with another momentum play. I'd go quickly and attack him because right now they probably have their heads down a little bit since they didn't stop him on third down. And that gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, and now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. James Robinson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Jags have taken the early lead. Just power football there, down near the goal line. Give it to him, he's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come and have to report like they're eligible, but all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, they had that great, long, methodical drive to put it in the end zone, then they tried to bite off a little more and get eight points. Instead, they're sitting at six. But didn't that feel like a decision that they made on Tuesday? Yeah. You well, know, you usually say the that's what they do, right? Right. That's, that's the best one. The best ones do that. They take the emotion out of it. That felt like that was scripted. Hey, if we score in the opening drive, we're going to go for two and try and really gain an advantage. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the former Louisville Cardinal, Teddy Bridgewater. Okay, I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance. I thought he played fairly well overall. The numbers won't knock your socks off. Two touchdown passes and an interception. The bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with a receiver? After the loss to start out, here's 2nd and 11. To throw is Bridgewater. That's complete to Marlon Mack. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. So the completion good for 7 there. And they're going to face a 3rd down. Bridgewater now. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. And he punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. Early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game. But I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra injury. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice. But at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll look to throw here. That would almost intercept it, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. DeForest Buckner with a sack, the former number seven overall pick. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Well, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down per minute and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense, and now they get to turn it back to their offense. 
They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. He'll air this one out deep for Sims. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked up by Corey Willis. And the Colts are going to take over once again at their own 37-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Starting the drive with a gift to Mack. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Here's Mack to get it again on second down. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. On third down, Bridgewater. And this is going to be incomplete. Looks like a second empty possession to start the game, and certainly not the way you want to start when you come in off of a loss last week. Every team talks about starting fast. They're hoping on their next possession, it can be a delayed fast start and get them going. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. He finds his man complete. It's Sims. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes his fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evening. So for some reason, it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. Back to throw again. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. It affords the incompletion. Out of the gun now on third down. And connecting here with DJ Shark. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Sims. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Second and one. Steps away. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 16. The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced the ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Back to throw. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. And here's a handoff out of the gun. Seven big yards on the carry there to get it within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? 
something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something to develop slowly. It's got to be right at them. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. James Robinson with his second touchdown of this opening quarter. And the Jaguars add six to their lead. So two drives, two touchdowns here in this first quarter, and he's got both of them. But well, he's certainly setting himself up for a big game here, and I think if the play caller doesn't get in his own way, they should keep riding him the entire way of this game. Until the defense proves they can stop him, that's what I would call. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and the lead now stands at 13. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. For the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and 10. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers putting up their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play car, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. They'll try and run for this with Mack. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Well, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, here's a give to Mack. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Back-to-back -back stops make it third and ten. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt, and it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And Sharp calls it in. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big play that time through the air. 34 yards. The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam. But notice how he keeps his head on a swivel looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. And, partner, they're locked in man coverage out left, and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that. Under pressure, and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Quinny Payne able to run him down for a loss of 12 that time. 
Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, it took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, it still definitely hurts. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Looking to throw. And that's complete. It sends. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. Rolling to his right. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. This a give to Mac running to the right. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Now a carry from back. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. To throw, Bridgewater. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Jadevian Clowney showing the explosiveness on the sack. It's a lot of discussion in the offseason about him having a big year and getting to the quarterback. They held him without a sack in week one, but how about here? Finally gets his first one of the season. In the offseason, said he changed his diet. Leaner feels so good this year. Excited to see what type of a season he can have. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. So here are the Jaguars to take over on offense. They were losers a week ago to the Texans, but they're on top right now as they start this drive out first and ten. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often miss time that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll set up a throw. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and ten. He finds his man complete. That's Sims. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. And a dangerous throw there on the drop-off. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Back to throw now on second and ten. Throw left side complete. That's Sims. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And is not 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A big connection on that one. 30 yards. I'm seeing a lot of hands on hips in that secondary, and I suspect... A lot of mumbling under their breath as well because this defense has had no answer for the passing game here in the first half. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown, Jaguars. Steven Sims, Jr., his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. So after the disappointment in the opening week loss, Charles, this looks like really a completely different football team. They sure do, and I think they realize we can't start 0-2, and they're determined to not let it happen by the looks of things here in early going. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And oh my goodness, this is nowhere close. Well to the right and no good. Boy, I guess they're going to keep trying to put the pedal to the metal here. They're going to try an onside kick. And this is going to be taken in by the Colts. Got a second quarter onside kick there that failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approach in going after it also may signal that they feel like they have the superior team, that they can try these sorts of things and it won't come back and hurt them later. A CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but man, his first step is so quick too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Yeah, things were pretty... Stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They give to Taylor out of the gun. About three yards there to the 27. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. He'll buy some time right, and he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. And now the Colts call on their field goal unit here. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Rosa's kick is good. And that'll get the deficit back to 16. So he splits the uprights, and has to be a nice feeling. Right when I left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, 
it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that will tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see. He's looked pretty good to this point. Now a throw here to his running back. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And it'll be second and ten. They'll set up to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Room to run past midfield. And some room to run now. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He'll drop this one off with ETN, and he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Second and ten. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense. Linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And they'll get this down to the ten. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. Now a play fake here on first down. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. You can't be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Steven Sims with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Jaguars are able to add on to their first half lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. They'll let Robinson try and run. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. Needed a couple yards for the two-point try. They go to the ground game, and it works. And sometimes it's the exact right thing to do because a lot of teams play you for the pass, so you spread people out, decide to run the football, you often find good running lanes. And this is going to be taken in by the Colts. And that's why you have your hands team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it. It was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics will tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. A first down throw for Bridgewater. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. Touchdown, Colts! Michael Pittman, 27 yards. And the Colts are able to draw a bit closer. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. He's got it, and it's a 27-10 score now. 
Clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Well, from deep in the end zone, he's going to bring this out. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown, but those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. They'll be hoping to make it a 3-1 to one ratio here in the second quarter. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. They're going to look to throw. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. They'll look to throw again. Open man here, Sims complete. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. They'll look to throw here on first down. The throw taken in by Sims. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. They'll run it now with Robinson. He gets away from, and he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. James Robinson on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns, and the Jaguars add on to their lead. This is becoming quite the half he's had here. Remember in our pregame meetings, they talked about wanting to run the football and staying with it. Well, when you're scoring this many touchdowns, there's no reason to go away from it, is there? They're off to a fantastic start. They hope it continues. Three already for it. So they kept it on the ground, got it into the end zone. But Charles, sometimes you probably see teams treat a two-point conversion differently than if it was first and goal from the two, or I should say third and goal from the two. I agree with you totally on that. A lot of teams treat it as if they have farther to go and shy away from running the football. I think this is a great spot to do it because most teams play you for the pass. Go ahead and run and let your linemen surge and fire out. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. First and 10, Bridgewater. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. And we 
they've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in his second week of the regular season. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Bridgewater to throw it. And that is incomplete. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They are clicking on all cylinders. They seem to be just scoring at will right now, and that's why they've opened up this big lead. Now we always talk about getting into the zone, and all athletes are seeking that, aren't they? But everything is working for them. Every move they make works. It clicks, and they are on point right now. Yeah, they are in that zone that you're talking about. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Now well, this throw caught left side. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. Again, he'll drop to throw. He gets it to Sims, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. Do you know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Everyone dialed in. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. He'll look to throw. Space to run past the 20. And finally down at the 9-yard line. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jack. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Robert Spillane coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. 
Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Bridgewater. They'll run the screen with Mack. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Bridgewater. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. 30. 10. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Michael Pittman with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Colts are able to cut into this lead. Rosas to add the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded right around the eight. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And they were terrific in the first half. Built up a sizable lead. And it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You could say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw here. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. And the Colts are going to take over once again with a football at their own 20-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Throwing on second and eight. Bridgewater. The toss here completed to Pittman. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when He's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him. Do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They'll go again here with Mack. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Yeah, that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A great effort there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Colts are able to draw a bit closer. Rosas good for the extra point. And that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. 
Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded right around the eighth. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And oh, he's unable to... Defensively, a potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. They'll look to throw. And on the slant, this is Chark. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Slant pass hauled in by Campbell. And he's taken down inside the 30. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Now the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away, turns into a nice play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. to throw again and that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball not the man winning coverage that'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties and he's able to knock that one away he's got it this is where and he's taken down but not before reaching the 10 yard line and this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown. Well, there is a marker on the field. The celebration may be short-lived. Let's see. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. Got to go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. And the penalty certainly makes things tougher here as they try again. Third and goal. They'll look to throw here. Over the middle, hauled in by Campbell. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. Nice job understanding the situation. Third and long, kept the play in front of them and made the tackle. They gave up a good chunk of yardage, but it does force a fourth down.
So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Gay knocks this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you'll see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Indy set to go on offense once more. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. He'll get this one to Pittman. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Looking to throw again on second down. Bridgewater, wide open receiver complete. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Colts have got it back to a one-score game. PAT up and good by Rose. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded right around the eighth. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. A good start to the drive here as that's caught out on the left side. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well After one play, it appears that the answer is yes. Now here's a throw that's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Back to throw. Steps away to his left. That's caught by Ware. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. 
from the gun. He'll hand this off. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards. Now it's third and five. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. recovery by the defense he's passed few downs able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense an unexpected fourth down here so give him three on that drive you know normally you'd say we'll take it but the way points have been flying around it feels like a little bit of a letdown yeah you just have to wonder are field goals going to be enough because as you pointed out the way touchdowns have been scored after the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And now out come the Jags. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to drop this underneath for Robinson. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. It's a big play for the Jaguars. I would say just add that one to the total big plays he's already made here in the first month of the year. You've got to think the front office and the coaching staff have got to be excited about what they've seen so far and really excited about what they expect to see down the road. Here's a throw out line complete to his running back right side. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. They'll drop to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Campbell. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy. For and he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. James Robinson taking it in from two yards out. And the Jaguars add six to their lead. Gay is on for the point after. He missed one earlier, remember, but this time he gets it to go. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. on the play back at the 46. He'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. Yeah, that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time we do indeed a big hit for a loss. It's a four yard pickup and that'll make it third down. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. 
Jadavian Clowney able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter. So time to retool a bit. And probably need to tap into that emotion. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Kenny Moore. This defense figured out something in the locker room. That's two third quarter picks now. And you just wonder, did he get too comfortable in the locker room himself? His team has the lead. Take care of the football. He's putting him in jeopardy right now. Following the interception, here's Bridgewater. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That catch good for only a couple. Second and eight. Bridgewater. And just not enough on the throw there, down around his feet and incomplete. Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. To throw, Bridgewater. And that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Rosas kick is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there... Make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else, and now it's third and ten. So he rolls out of the pocket left, just ends up finding a safety foul, but no gain there. No gain, but it looked like they were well coached on the play because he still went through his progressions, and the receivers know that when the quarterback exits the pocket, they have defined routes to run now to get into his sight lines and try and help him out. End up throwing it short to the running back. Give the defense credit for not giving up any yardage. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. And this is caught, but they say out of bounds. It would have been a first down, but he couldn't stay in, and as a result, they're going to have to give up the football. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call, and the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in it. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Jadavian Clowney picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, when you time those screen passes perfectly, they can work perfectly, but that time it took a little too long to develop. And you zeroed in on exactly what makes that play go. Timing. Because if the timing's off at all... Oh, no, he lost 
the football. And the Jags grab it. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions completions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? On third down, he'll drop to throw. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. He'll drop to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And the Colts are right back in this football game. When you think about it, though, that interception, great for his stats, but bad for field position. It was fourth down. Yeah, terrific observation. If there is going to be a silver lining, and this is what he'll plead when it comes time to watch it again. Hey, it was just like a punt, right? So we end up taking possession of the ball. But you're exactly right about it. Should have slapped it down. Field position would be better for his offense. But how many times do you get a chance to make an interception that you turn it down? That's when your instinct kicks in and you take the football. In this case, a better decision would have been to knock the ball down. 60 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. First down throw for Bridgewater. Into the hands of his running back, Marlon Mack. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. On the give, this is Mack. And this is going to be a Colts first down as the tackle made at about the 38. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game, gets him eight yards closer for third down. On the handoff, it's Mack. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Mack, and he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. He only needed a yard, but he couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. So still 14 yards to go, second down. They'll set up to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. You wonder with any receiver how they'll handle working over the middle of the NFL, especially with a young receiver. They tried it there to no avail. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And 
this will be incomplete. Boy, can you believe this? That one probably should have been picked, too. Instead, it's fourth down. And here's a big one now. Trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll set up a throw. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Greedy Williams picks it off. And the Colts are right back in this football game. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. The interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit. And this series could very well determine our outcome. A beautiful thing. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Flushed out right. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. talk about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this with both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. From the red zone now, Bridgewater. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. To throw is Bridgewater. This is caught. Touchdown, Colts! Kylan Granson. 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow, you can make this a positive, though. You know why? game tied now so you're not protecting a lead so you're not playing that way you gotta go get the lead again so maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play and past the 40 before he's out of bounds and partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter you and i both know in the nfl that's when you lean on your stars and he came through with a nice catch right there out to his left He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Second and five. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. They're going to look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Oh, 
They'll look to throw here on first down. Being chased out left. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Second and two. Dancing to his left. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bonding him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. On third down, it's Robinson. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. They'll run here with Robinson. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. He'll look to throw on the move to his left. And a dump off here to Robinson. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. Rolling to his left. A hit as he throws there incomplete. Well, he certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. They'll try and run. This is Robinson. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. And now third and goal coming up. The loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder. And they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Give him four yards there, but they're still well short of the goal line with fourth down now looming. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. This one no doubt important for Matt Gay. This for the lead in the final stages. Gay's kick is good. Less than two to play with just a field goal separating these two sides. excited to get the football touched it before it went 10 yards and that's so difficult isn't it because sometimes it can just take a bad hop and veer into your lane or into your body in this case though they touched it before 10 illegal touching is the call the drive starts with a completion left side call it a gain of six on the play and that'll bring up second down he's got the tight end mo alley cox Clock running here, under 90 seconds to go. Bridgewater's throw into the hands of Pittman here. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So an incomplete pass a moment ago, and that leads to second and goal. Bridgewater to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Bridgewater. 
Sliding out of the pocket. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to tie things up in the final minute. Rosas' kick is good. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision-making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. The Jaguars again ready to take over on offense. They have a little bit of time here to get in the field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A big play that time through the air. 32 yards. We spent a lot of time talking about what's going on on the field. How about off the field with the evaluation? And they spent a lot of time saying, we've got to get a rookie in here who has big playability. And that's exactly what we're seeing here early in his career. Drafted him in the spring. Here he is early in the fall making an impact. They'll look to throw now on first down. He's going to let it go again. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Back to throw here. Buying time to his left. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. The improv act there, good for nine. And now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. And with just inside of 10 seconds to go, they'll burn their final timeout. Nine seconds left. short they'll try and pick it up through the air and he's going to get to the 31 enough for the first down and we have free football over time here we go my friend and the way this game played out it's a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner okay so in the past we had sudden death first team to score wins but no longer now if the team receives the ball scores a touchdown they win the game if they kick a field goal though or don't score the other team gets a possession and after both teams get a possession then we're into sudden death first team to score wins the game and here comes a return from the middle of the end zone and only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Looking to throw. Forced out to his left. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. 
The improv act there, good for nine, and now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. On third down, Robinson, and he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. I don't want to overhype it, but this is a big early season game, especially an overtime win. That can give you a big boost going forward in the season. It certainly can, and I don't think you're overhyping it because cliches go out the window when you start to play overtime. And you're right, the winner of this game now, that's an extra boost moving forward, and it actually is an extra hurt for the team that loses because normally you shake it off, but in this situation, it lingers a little bit longer. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there at the moment the ball gets to the receiver, and he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. Steps away to his left. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. And this would be a Jaguars first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Back to throw now on first down. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he's brought down. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call. But when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, keep giving it to him. That tells me you're mature as a play caller and it's working for them in overtime. And he's able to carve out about six there down to the 37. Four yards remain for second down. They'll run again here with Robinson. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. But when you go from second to four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. On third down, it's Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 67 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Now left side on the swing pass, and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. He'll look to throw. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Not only another first down, that also puts him over 100 yards rushing. That's not something you see very often in the NFL. We see it more in college. But I think with more of the melding of the college game with quarterbacks, we'll see this a little bit more often in the future. And showcasing those strong legs on that run, getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. Second down, it's Robinson. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and a game winner in OT.
As a fan takes it back out through the turnstiles, not happy looks on their faces. Feel like they probably let this one slip away at home in overtime. I would agree with that, and, and their unhappiness hurts the guys in concession stands on the way out, right? <laughs> not stopping to buy something for the kids. They just want to get home. But what a dramatic way to finish this bad boy off. I mean, this game was dramatic all the way through. That's why we got to overtime. And then to go ahead and finish it this way, the fans streaming out unhappy. But the team that came in here and won this one on the road, they sprinted to their locker room. And speaking of buying things, dinner on you tonight, Davis. I kind of figured that was coming. So for the Jaguars, they did what they needed to do. They split their first two road games of the year. And they will head home next week to take on the Tennessee Titans. Meanwhile, for the Colts... They'll drop to 0-2, and, and they will get a home date next week against the Los Angeles Chargers. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.